Fun fact, this is actually the third or fourth time I put this video together because every time I get it where I want it to be, I discover some groundbreaking thing that you might want to know for the DJI Action 4. Had this thing for a couple weeks, filmed a couple of videos in different modes just because I thought I had solved all the problems. And then I got the DJI Bluetooth GPS remote, which goes with the Action 4. Super cool, so really, it's gonna be the highlight of this video. But along the way, I'm gonna do six things. Number one, I'm gonna show you how to extract the footage out of the camera onto your phone. That's kind of step one with this whole thing. Number two, I'm gonna show you how to put overlays like this onto your footage so that you can extract all that GPS data and put it on footage that you took. Third, I'm going to show you how to remove the Invisa stick or use the Invisa stick feature using this camera, which is also pretty cool. Number four, I'm gonna show you how to get the door off, which, I didn't want to break it, so I figured out how to get the door off. So I'm going to share that with you. Then I'm going to show you how to always ensure that your DJI mic that's connected to this thing is working. I learned a lesson there with one of my trials of this video. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to always have the low light image enhancement on when you want it. Again, I learned a lesson there because I flew the drone, the DJI Vada all through the woods, trying to capture some footage to show you the difference between the two, and lo and behold, it didn't work. So I'll share the tips on how to always get the low light image enhancement working on the DJI Action 4. And before I start, why do I love this camera? First of all, 4K 120, awesome footage, the ability to connect it to just about anything. This is in a tilta cage, which is really cool. It comes with this cage already, but the fact that you can just easily connect this thing to everything is really kind of the game changer for me. And inside the cage, you can mount it in different ways. So really that, the fact that I can manipulate the settings on both sides, because when I put this in different places, like on my helmet, I can't get to the back screen. So it's super nice to get to the front screen. Now that we have this GPS remote, it's also super cool. Rugged, waterproof, the stabilization of this thing is awesome. No need for a gimbal. And I use a lot of times, I use the horizon balance feature of this. Here's a pro tip. You can't use the low light stabilization in horizon balance. More about that later. But the fact that you can just walk around solo creator mode with this camera in horizon balance with the DJI mic connected to it, just gives you awesome audio, awesome video, and it's super cool. There's a portrait mode with this that I've tried and it's just not that great. I'm not gonna to talk too much about that. I just can't really see the difference between the portrait and the normal mode. But again, I'm not. this video is not about that. So let's get to my list of things. Top six things you might wanna know about the DJI Action 4. All right, number one, how to extract the footage out of the camera. Now I'll admit, most of the time, I'm the type of person that just likes to remove the memory card out of the camera, connect it to my computer, download all the footage and go with it that way. But the problem with it is when you're trying to use either InvisiStick or you're trying to overlay the dashboard, you can only do that on the app on your phone or an iPad. So that's kind of the hang up here. You can't do this in a desktop application like you can in the with the Insta360 X3, where you can extract the data all on your desktop, you have to do it in the phone, which is kind of a bummer. Some more about that as I move along. First, you need the DJI Mimo app, get it on your phone, and then you connect it. That's probably how you activated it in the first place. You probably already have the app. Now, getting the footage from here to there is really kind of the hang up. And when you look at your album on your phone, what normally happened for me was you couldn't see any of the previews of the footage, and then you couldn't extract any of it from the camera to the phone. And the trick to doing just that is to turn off cellular. So go to your settings, turn off cellular, reload the DJI Mimo app, and lo and behold, you'll see all the footage and then it will extract and download from the Action 4 to your phone. Now that it's in the album, you can do the rest of the thing. So that's number one, turn off cellular, and then that's how you can get it out of the camera onto your phone. And then don't forget to turn it back on when you're done. The next trick here, and now we're talking about how to get footage just like this onto your phone and actually onto your footage. Once you're in 
the Mimo app, you're gonna go to your album and you're gonna click on whatever footage that you wanna extract. Here I recorded some stuff on the motorcycle just yesterday. As soon as I got the remote. And I should probably pause there. This isn't entirely about the remote, but just a little aside, if you have the remote, it is super cool. There com It comes with two bands, one to put on your wrist if you're to like ski with it or water ski or that kind of thing. And the other way is to put it with this shorter band onto your motorcycle handlebars. That's what I have on your mountain bike or your road bike, whatever you want to do. But either way, you're gonna put this on your bike and it's gonna you're gonna wait till the GPS syncs up until it uh, latches on to the GPS satellites. And then after that, when you hit record, all that GPS data is gonna be recorded on the DJI Action 4. There you go. So I recorded that yesterday on a motorcycle ride. Once you go that, you're gonna to go to the lower right hand corner and you're gonna edit. And then you're gonna see some things down at the bottom. We're gonna use this for uh, step three as well. But tip number two, you hit the dashboard. Now I've done this two different ways while it's loading. And you'll see that it says better if you download the footage. I did it after this footage is already downloaded. I did it when it was in the camera. I still got the same sort of delay. Either way, I'm going to wait for this to stop spinning and then you can see the dashboard pops up and I have different options. Now, if you, as you select with different ones, super cool, you can put all these things, including inclination. All these features are fantastic and they're just awesome and super accurate. I'll show a little footage here of both this, which you're gonna get out of the DJ Action 4, and what I got out of the Insta360 X3 at the same time. I like, uh, you know, I don't have a preference either one, but if you wanted to know what the difference is between the Insta360 overlays and also the Action 4, here it is. I didn't do anything with the GoPro. Why? Because there's no way to put it through GoPro. You gotta do some other software, which I didn't want to get into. These two options are just with the actual camera software for the actual camera, so it's pretty cool. Now, once you have it in here, hit the little checkbox, and then you're going to export. Now. Here's my problem with this. You can use original resolution or you can reduce it. I've tried both in 4K and I've tried it in 1080p and I've tried everything from the full version of this video, which is 18 and a half minutes, a 10 minute, just under 10 minute version, and then down to about a two to four minute version. The two minute version was the only one that I actually completed. All the rest of them went all the way around for a long time and then crashed at the end. So. It's really kind of a pain right now and I really don't like it, but if you wanted short clips, uh, that's really all I've been able to get out of that. Hopefully the software updates and then we are able to extract the whole thing or maybe do it on a desktop version. Either way, it's kind of a pain. But anyway, you can get small clips out of this right now. Meanwhile, the Insta360 X3, I got the whole thing with that dashboard on it and it's super nice and I like it because you can change the perspective. Here's some forward looking, here's some back looking. A lot of versatility on the go with the Insta360 X3 because it's recording everything. This is not about the X3, this is about the Action 4 and just comparing side by side the footage of both. Anyway, extracting it is really kind of the biggest hassle in my opinion. All right, number three, InvisiStick. And again, you have to have the footage in the phone to use the InvisiStick. Again, down at the bottom, scroll all the way to the right, you're gonna see InvisiStick. And then it's gonna export your footage from your phone to the cloud, process it to remove the InvisiStick or make the stick invisible, and then download it to your phone. Now you can only do it in 1080, why? Because you're, you're pushing things into the cloud and then it's processing and sending it back to you. So again, if we had an app on the, on the computer, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to do these things on your computer and not have to do this whole cloud thing? The other downer is that when you get that footage, it's in 1080, you don't get the 4K quality with that InvisiStick. So there you go, InvisiStick, non-InvisiStick, you name it. That's number four, that's how you get InvisiStick to work. All right, number four, how do we get the door off? So getting the door off of this thing is not that complicated, but the thing to remember is that you really kind of have to have it at the upper end of the, of the uh, hinge because there's an angle to the way that thing is attached. So you're not gonna break it, but if you go all the way extended, just sort of wiggle, you're gonna get that thing off. And then as you look closely, you're gonna see the angle of that hinge to put it back on the little tab there. So that's how you get the door off. Just be careful. You probably can get replacement one with DJI if you did break it. All right, now once it's off, that's how we can connect the microphone. So, and you know, 
So I'm helping you learn from my lessons. I took this thing out. I did a beautiful uh, video on the beach showing you all the highlights of the DJI Action 4. And lo and behold, what was the problem? But the microphone was not connected. So that was kind of a bummer. So here we are. Make sure that your DJI mic is connected by ensuring that the microphone shows up right here. And so you, there's a little icon right in the front that shows you the DJI mic and it actually moves when you're recording. So that's the way to ensure this thing's actually on and recording. I didn't do that, I didn't verify, and so I lost all that footage. It's actually okay. So, and I'll put a little clip here. So I just didn't know the settings or I didn't know how to do some of the features. So I've learned all those things. Where you can hear the quality of the microphone just from this distance, it's actually pretty nice, but I had the microphone out and it didn't work. So when you plug in the remote, definitely verify that that thing's recording before you start recording. One more pro tip though, the DJI mic has the ability to start instantly recording when you pop it out. It's recording on the actual microphone, not the receiver or your camera. So the transmitter can record audio. So this is the backup feature that would have saved me on that clip. But anyway, use that backup feature, but also ensure that the icon is moving. I have both this and the remote on. You can see both the remote icon and you can see the DJI mic. So pro tip, learn from my mistakes. Lastly, yeah, and again, learning from my mistakes, I did this whole thing, I've done two of uh, sequences with this camera to try to show how awesome the low light image enhancement is. I know you've seen other videos comparing direct footage, but how to always ensure you have that is to actually know what settings on the camera, you don't get that image enhancement. Here's the two settings you need to know. First, frames per second. 30 frames per second or slower, you'll get the low light image enhancement. Anything faster, it's not gonna be an option, it's gonna be grayed out and it won't work. That's how I tried it, and 60 frames per second. So there you go. The other thing is rock steady plus or more, you're not gonna get that low light image enhancement. So you really rock steady or off are only the only two settings where it's gonna actually work. So there you go. On the go, this is, in my opinion, the best camera. If you were gonna buy one right now for a trip in the next probably two to three weeks or a month, the DJ Action 4 is probably my choice. Now you got a lot of other great options out there. This is the Insta360 GO 3, which is a great camera. I did a video on this, I'll post the link up here. Definitely a top contender. The GoPro is good. There's just enough little things that I just don't like about it. I really just love the magnetic attachment that you get out of the Action 4. And to be honest, the Insta360 Insta GO 3. The only other thing I would maybe consider is the X3 Insta360 because it is really just a very versatile camera. The downside is when you start to crop in, you start to lose some of the image quality. And this is just boom, in your face, awesomeness from the DJI Action 4. Love it, so there you go. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I mostly do videos on backpacks. Anything on the go, things to get you outside, one of the things that I always have with me is some sort of action camera to you know, be a second camera to what I'm mostly recording on the go is my iPhone. But there you go. Hope to see you in the next video. Mostly backpacks and occasionally a camera. We're gonna get outside because the weather's nice, even though it's hot, but it's still worth getting outside. See you in the next video.